Here to talk more about the great work of the Carmelites is uh, Sister Maureen McDonough, who is the administrator of St. Patrick's Manor. Thank you so much for being with us, oh, it's Sister a pleasure. Maureen. Um, maybe if we could start off by talking a little bit about the charism of the Carmelites and the need um, for um, assistance to the aged and infirm and how important that is. Oh, it's so very, very important um, for the care of the elderly in these days even more so. Um, I can remember taking care of them when I was a young lady and um, going through high school and that and in grammar school. And it was the sisters, the sisters that were there, that were their mission and their charisma to take care of them. And that is our life, to give them the dignity that they deserve and um, to make sure that they're taken care of and not taken advantage of. And through that, I have to say that, you know, in those days we had many, many vocations and we had many sisters, today we don't. And that's what you look for, to people that you're going to be able to give our residents to so that they'll be there in the future caring for them and to carry on our charisma in caring for the aged. You know, um, it changes so quickly. But the residents at, you know, St. Patrick's Manor or Austin Marion Manor, they look at us and, you know, they love seeing the habits. They love seeing the sisters running around, um, <laughs> you know, um, doing their odd jobs and that. And the, but the presence of us in the facility with them is, is, is so inspiring, yeah. you know, and into the families too. But our charisma and Mother Angelines is always the care of the aged, uh, the aged and the priests. You know, that yeah. was our life right from the beginning. And that's been instilled in all our sisters, at, you know, even today. Yeah. You know, how, how do you how do you go about creating that that atmosphere of you know of love in in your residence saints such as St. Patrick and Mary? And Sometimes, yeah, in the beginning, it's difficult because the um, you know when they come into the facility, they want to be home and that. But we've been commenting on so much that um, our residents uh, it's home like. Yeah. People are friendly. They walk in the door. People are friendly. People go and greet the residents. They're on the units, and people come over to them and introduce themselves, and they almost feel like they belong. And a lot of times there are those that, um, um, if you can tell if they're not going to adjust, they're going to need some more encouragement, or they're going to need special, you know, attention to them. And you just work. It's an individual thing, yeah. you know, and it works. But I think in the whole... Um, our sisters, this is our life, you know, um, and this is what we do. We do it well, and um, we just uh, there for them, just the presence. We're at meals with them. We go to the floors. If they need assistance uh, at one day, then we stay with them, and that's how we were taught by the former sisters that were in community. It's like a family. Yeah, we are yeah. a family. Our staff the same way. Our staff have been there 25, 27, 30 years, and their children are there. So what's actually has happened in our homes is that it's family united. Yeah, yeah. And that's such a wonderful thing. The spirit is there. And I think it's because it's happy. Yeah. I haven't you visited know? there. I know um, the sisters really do keep their eyes on things. And it just gives such a, I think it's a relief for people that they know, okay, we're going to be cared for and the sisters are going to make sure we're well cared for. And you do. Right. And we live there. That's another presence. Yeah. We live there. We just uh, we have a tunnel that goes from the convent <laughs> to the nursing home, so nobody knows when we're going to show up. And, um, you know, and it's wonderful because um, if somebody gets ill, they'll um, call somebody. They'll call Sister Bridget, you know, and um, or I'll, you know they notify me that somebody is dying, and you know we can be there. We can be there, but we teach that to our um, staff because through example, yeah. through example, because they see us doing it. They see us, you know, um, taking care of them, giving them their spiritual needs, uh, feeding them. And I think that's a catch-on. People just do that automatically. And what they see, uh, our children do the same thing from their parents. They, they learn. So by example, they learn. And I think what we do, too, is that we don't say that's not our job, but that is our job. So we just participate in it. Yeah. You know, um, and as the year goes on, it gets difficult because, you know, we're aging in place, too. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but you're there. The presence is there. Um, I don't know what happens years to come when um, they're not, the sisters aren't there, or if we don't, they don't have them, people with the habits on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're so used to the habits. Yeah. And I really think that's it. Or 
you know, that they have masses. We're so privileged, so privileged to have mass three uh, on three chapels in our facility every day. That's great. You know, we have it in the convent, we have it at St. Patrick's, we have it at Carmel Terrace. What a wonderful thing yeah. that anybody could go to those masses, you know, and uh, thank God for the Jesuits because <laughs> they come and they give their services also. That's you know, just. so it's a wonderful thing. And it's good for them because they're aging too and we're tired and they have a place to go. Absolutely. You know, so I thank you for that, Father. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what attracted you? If, take us back a few years, uh, Sister Maureen, to, oh, the, many the, years, <laughs> many years. to the Carmelites. Uh, and the Carmelites. <laughs> I, live, I, come from, I was born and raised in South Boston. Okay. I was from um, the D Street Project, mm. which I'm very proud of. Mm. And my mother uh, was an immigrant from Galway, Ireland, on the Aran Islands. And um, she came over, and she had a family. And um, she worked at Mary Manor. In those days, the area she worked in was um, down at the villa, they called it. And that's where um, the emergency room was. And so she always taught us that you pay back. You know, and I think she wanted to keep an eye on me, too. <laughs> so um, she instilled that on us. So we started volunteering, you know. So, I mean, I wasn't thrilled about it, but, you know, I had another life, I thought. <laughs> but um, I did. I volunteered after school for many years. And then um, when um, I got out of school, a while later, um, I don't know, something was nagging me. I didn't look for a vocation. Believe me, I didn't. <laughs> um, I had other plans, but um, there was a nag there, and um, I got caught, <laughs> and so I did go. But I did love the, el the elderly. I always loved taking care of them. Yeah. I had my favorites when I was younger, and um, that's what gave me the push, like, you know, and I think it's because that's how we were raised, yeah. you know, but... Um, I have never doubted it, you know, and um, today and these days and ages, I, I, I feel that this is where we need to be because, and I'm glad I did do that, because we do have to pr protect our elderly. Mm -hmm. Well, we thank you, Sister Maureen, for being with us. Uh, and